you know they can be ignorant or they are quite like basic or whatever like that okay but <laughs> yeah but another thing there that like i don't really quite like is like the tipping <laughs> actually i had a question for you too <laughs> mm -hmm. what is it because we were actually in the same like american transfer program so let me just explain a little bit what american program is so basically yes i was in an american degree transfer program or american university program aup basically it's like two plus two programs so initially the plan was just like two years in malaysia and then another two years in the u.s so essentially if i followed the plan i would have gone to the u.s and graduated there however i did not choose that i mean i decided not to go so basically i transferred to another college in malaysia and finished my study over there still and i obtained a degree from a u.s university but yeah long story short it's almost pretty much the same um like all the courses and everything um but you finish it in malaysia instead of in the u.s yeah so there's that let me know if you want further explanation regarding my degree or my major or my program i will make a separate video about that thank you guys so back to the video so like uh -huh. you were going to transfer as well right uh -huh. so like uh -huh. just wondering why you didn't i decided it would be better for my family like when it comes to the budget to, to mm. stay in malaysia that's the first and also mm. at the time i concerned more about what if if i spent the education money over there in the u.s and then i ended up not like so liking it yeah. over there and then True. in my opinion i feel like i have to work over there if I already spent so much money doing education over there. So mm. if I want to come back home, I feel like there is that burden on me. Mm. Not for my parents, but I just feel like I already spent so, so much yeah. money. Yeah. What if I come back and then it's just the same as like those that did study locally. When it comes to my feelings, I feel like I am very much a family person. I would prefer if I can come back more frequently, I would say. But yeah. U.S. is just yeah. very, very far away. It's so far away. Yeah, it's <laughs> so far away. You have to think a lot of times if you want to come back, you know. And also at the time, I just felt like I had to follow my gut more than my mm. my plan. I would say. Yeah. yeah. So monetary and also like at the time I had a boyfriend. Yeah. So I was like, eh, the long distance won't work, and it, yeah, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like new video a lot, ideas a, a lot of reasons though but that were yeah. there were just two of them and i feel like mm -hmm. it's not bad at all to have a degree like american degree in malaysia mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. cheaper and i live closer mm -hmm. to my family i can come back often and then they can come and visit me and then suddenly this covid thing also happened oh my god suddenly this virus is like all over the place and like what if yeah. i did further my study like mm -hmm. transfer to the u.s wow there would be like so much money waste wasted and then mm -hmm. suddenly i just mm -hmm. have to um study from home you know that's just yeah uh, i can't really imagine yeah. myself oh my god no so i felt so yeah. grateful at the time i feel like that's why i feel nowadays it is good to follow my guts and intuition instead of mm -hmm. like following the plans like i do have yeah. plans but if it doesn't really feel right anymore you can, yeah, always you can always change no matter what other people say of course people would talk not they would ask like you i don't mind people asking like why did you suddenly not transfer to the us mm -hmm. it's fine but at the mm -hmm. time I, I was just like i didn't really want to talk about it so yeah. when people ask me that i was just like answered very vaguely yeah, yeah you understand like but now it's just my choice <laughs> yeah but now if you ask me no. i would answer it hmm and I just felt like it. Yeah, I think that's true though. I think at the end of the day, no matter where anyone mm -hmm. goes mm -hmm. to study, I feel like you will learn a lot mm -hmm. no matter where that's you true. go, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my so, like, main motivation actually is just to expose myself to another background culture. Yes. And also, mm -hmm. I didn't really, especially, like, it has to be in America. It wasn't like that for me. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I knew I wanted like English as the oh. main language. 
What do you love the most about American education system? Oh my god. Actually, yeah, I do really enjoy the American education system. As obviously I can't say it's the same all over America, but there is a lot of learning, actual <laughs> learning. Cuz like when I was studying in Malaysia, uh, my classes were 2 hours long. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the classes is just lecturer doing what mm-hmm. I call like presentation karaoke where they just like read the thing that they wrote on the slide. <laughs> And then sometimes okay it's nice cuz like you get to hear it and everything but like in the US my classes were 50 minutes you are expected to be a bit prepared for class and then you will get to discuss in class and you will get to go further into the topic in class and that kind of stuff and i think the assignments assignments are a lot more focused on letting you explore things instead of mm-hmm. just like Oh, right about this. If you read, if you meet all the points, if you include all of the stuff, then you get an A. If you do all the right mm-hmm. citation, then you get an A. Stuff like mm-hmm. that. It was a lot of hands-on experience that I didn't get. Maybe it's also just like this is from my experience. Obviously, it was really not so much focused on exams, and a lot mm-hmm. more focused on like actual like assignment learning kind of stuff. Wow, that's great. A lot of my classes really don't have final exams, especially once I get further into my major. Because mm-hmm. I think all of my classes when I was studying in Malaysia had final exam and it's usually 30%. I would say I I had a different experience though because mm-hmm. I moved to another in in Subang or mm-hmm. I moved to another place. So when I was in college with you, yeah, I experienced the same thing like most lecturers just kind of um explain through their presentation and that's about it. And then we had to sit for the exam, final mm-hmm. exam. But when I moved there, it was a different experience maybe because it was already like going into my major. Right. It was like much more very hands-on. Mm-hmm. Like some subjects don't even have any finals like you said. Mm-hmm. I think it depends because the first two years, I think we were just expected to learn more about general right. basic stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that is kind of like appropriate to have true <laughs> to have final exam but our major is very much hands on hands-on. especially one of my lectures said like what you learn in class may not be like it's theoretically correct but what is out there may not be the same right. stuff like that so yeah. mm-hmm. especially like with the whole um what is it called the employer project mm. we we did have some of that so we were more exposed to the real real world mm-hmm. situation rather than you know just sit in class and listen to whatever the teachers not teachers mm-hmm. lecturers are saying you know mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah that's good yeah because mm-hmm. you know like maybe that's also true because i was taking more of like those general ed mm-hmm. classes mm-hmm. when i was mm-hmm. here but it, i have to say because like the program we went to is not just my like our own major but like it's mm-hmm. like everybody right it's like yes uh-huh. so maybe that's also why but like you know mm-hmm. like when i went to the us i really felt in like very inspired by like all of mm-hmm. my peers they're all mm-hmm. like super passionate <laughs> mm-hmm. uh and like not obviously not all of them but like a mm-hmm. good really Most. like they're yeah a lot of them really when they go into that major they have a passion for mm-hmm. it and then they are often very vocal Mm-hmm. compared to you know i think asians in general like, i think asians mm-hmm. in general yeah. don't like to be asians in general yeah, yeah they don't like to disrupt the flow so like they're like mm-hmm. i feel like there's a lot of people who are very vocal so i think it kind of makes the classroom experience a bit more interesting <laughs> yeah but in my classroom there were like a lot of people who were very vocal mm-hmm. about their thoughts which was very surprising coming from like you know yeah. malaysian background yeah 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 a lot of them were like they they're not afraid to state their own opinions which mm-hmm. is like very good mm-hmm. i do stereotype asians as those kind of like yeah um oppressed <laughs> i mean like <laughs> i mean like no they they don't want to let yeah. their thoughts out yeah 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 mm-hmm. because it's about people, community just, just in case mm-hmm. yeah just in case other people don't take it um in a good way mm-hmm. So they better not say it yeah. stuff like that so better just keep it quiet and yeah. follow the majority. Yeah. But a lot a good amount of people in my class um were more vocal mm-hmm. about yeah about certain st- certain topics, certain thoughts and like cultural things mm. and 
Yeah. 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 Real cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which was very interesting. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. this really does prove the point of like, you know, no matter where you go, you will learn a lot. I think. <laughs> Uh, the education, I think, you know, it's not like you go to America and you'll be smarter. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can get, mm-hmm. you know, you can be educated no matter where you go. I think, like maybe, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, I obviously opened my eyes to a lot more new mm-hmm. cultural cultures mm-hmm. and like stuff. So like, mm-hmm. but that kind of stuff is like outside the classroom mostly. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, yeah. As long as you're open-minded, I feel like you can learn so much from people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like it would be kind of different because I mean we can't really compare like apple to apple, me and you, mm-hmm. because I come from Indonesia and then I moved to Malaysia. Uh, mm-hmm. Another experience, like studying abroad experience. Yeah. But for you, uh huh, studying in Malaysia, that is still your own country. You already know yeah. what the situation is kind of like roughly like, mm-hmm. although you live in a different city. Yeah. Uh huh. But. When you moved to yes. the US, I feel like it is just completely like yeah. new world, yeah. right? New experience, and about, like, new back independence and stuff like that. Uh huh, yeah. uh huh, uh huh. Definitely. So I agree. Yeah. What about the other way around? What do you hate the most huh. about American <laughs> education system? Is there any? The, there, I okay. I'm speaking from like college level. <laughs> Obviously, uh-huh. you know, like there's a lot of people who always comment about you know American high school system how it's like. Really messed up, you know, like the kind of stuff they teach versus don't teach. But obviously, I didn't mm-hmm. go to high school in America, so I'm just talking about mm-hmm. college level. I think one of the thing is money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess that's not exactly the education system, but I just want to mention, like, they really charge international students a lot, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> okay, so agree. Yeah. I do agree because I. Wanted to move there in the first place, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Very, mm-hmm. very expensive. It's like triple what locals mm-hmm. pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine if you can't find any. It means know, you really like, enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I feel like there's <laughs> mostly the the education system itself wasn't really like that much problem. Obviously, there's always a lot of problem with like bu- uh-huh. bureaucracy kind of thing. Like, ah, oh, you know, like the admin of the school is very like uh, not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Or, You know, like certain <laughs> professors. Like, there's always a lot of complaints that, like, kind of like this. You know, like, oh, they mm-hmm. didn't refund me my money or something like that. But the edu- <laughs> actual education, I think, was actually I learned a lot. Yeah, that's great. By the way, talking about the whole bureaucracy thing, how long it took for the visa to be out? Yeah, like the whole process of like me getting the visa was mm-hmm. honestly I can't. I feel like I like just repressed that memory because <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was long, right? Yeah, but like it was very also long. very chaotic because I wasn't that prepared. Because you need to wait from the school, and then you need to get the document from school, and then you need to bring document to embassy, which is in you know KL, and then you need to, and then they really like scare you. <laughs> they will tell you like, oh, you need to prepare like ten, ten, fifteen different documents, and then you really have all of it, and then you go there, and they only really like. See, look at like two of your documents. I think it was just so, very exhausting for my heart. I think. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> But in conclusion, it took a while as well for Malaysians to uh, um, get the visa. I really don't remember that. Much. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine then. Let's not talk talk about visa because yeah. I also I I hate it honestly. Yeah. Saying. Okay. Mm. So lastly, if you were given a choice to stay there for good. Stay in America for good. What you want to and why? No. <laughs> <laughs> why? <sighs> okay, I really, I just don't see myself. Like I, I think it's really good to ha- study mm-hmm. there, and get mm-hmm. experience there. But I think long term, mm-hmm. I really just, I'm just not American. <laughs> like I can't see myself <laughs> ever migrating to become an American. I admire people who like uh-huh. make the move. For like uh-huh. you know their future or they want to start family they want better things for their children, uh-huh. but I really just don't see myself living a satisfying life there, because mm-hmm. I'm just it's just not my culture it's just not something that like I will like miss so much of like family and like culture mm-hmm. back here, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also I actually think that I'm very invested in Malaysia like. I do love this country and like, and I only become like more kind of patriotic, I guess. Like after mm-hmm. I left, because mm-hmm. you know, before when you're just in here, you're just kind of like, oh, it's just a country, you know. But like, yeah. 
But when mm. you leave, it's kind of like, oh, I'm Malaysian, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Which is why I actually think like studying abroad, like not to sound privileged, but I think, you know, even if you go to like Singapore or something, like, <laughs> like as long as you like get to experience another culture, like for a, a longer period of time, I feel like it's mm-hmm. seriously a good experience because n- I feel like there is a lot of um, hope for the future mm-hmm. in Malaysia mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who tell me like, "Oh, why didn't you stay in the U.S.? Like, oh, you you could have just stayed there. There's so much mm-hmm. opportunities there." But I mm-hmm. feel like there's also a lot of opportunities here, and you can't mm-hmm. just keep complaining about Malaysia or like any other country, and then like not want to do about anything about it. Because I feel like there's a lot of expats or whatever who will you know always say like, "Oh yeah, like my home country is so bad, blah blah blah." Sucks. But mm. like you're not doing anything about it. Like not to get so in depth, but there's this idea. It, I think it was written by he was a, a black civil activist a long time ago. He wrote this thing called like the Talented Tenth, which where he was saying that actually the most talented groups of people of any community should be the ones staying back to help, not them leaving to search for better opportunities. Like they should be the one who is uplifting their own community, kind of thing. So, I'm not saying I'm talented, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a good point, though. Yeah. Um, that's very inspiring as well. Yeah. And with that, <laughs> I am going to edit here, just like what we did in the podcast. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you wanna hear my thoughts about my experience, like what what did we talk about? YouTube, the podcast? Forgot. you know, YouTube media. <laughs> oh yeah. If you if you wanna hear my thoughts about media and um, cultures, YouTube, and stuff like that. You can head on to Spotify and Apple Music, and then I will link it down below. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think that's about it from us. If you like this kind of video, feel free to subscribe. I mean, it is free anyway, so do subscribe and like and share this to your friends. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>